Hello and welcome back to Red Tech. My name is Nate and today we're here in Hollywood at the new Red Store and Production Center. I'd like to cover another big ticket item today and that is back focus. We'll cover the hardware involved, uh, the tools needed, and the overall process as well as some best practices. So back focus, when properly set, will ensure that the marks on your lens line up perfectly with the distance of a subject to the camera's witness mark. This accuracy is dictated by the camera's flange depth. This is the distance from the front flange on the lens mount, the surface that the lens is seated against, to the camera's sensor plane, which is indicated by the witness mark seen right here. Now, this depth standard is different depending on the type of mount, but today we're gonna focus primarily on PL. PL stands for positive lock, and the depth spec for that is 52 millimeters. This distance needs to be precise as the amount that we're actually adjusting is measured in micrometers, or also commonly referred to as microns. So for some perspective, a human hair, I don't have any, but is roughly 75 microns, and a red blood cell is about five microns, which coincidentally is the same size as the photosites on the Dragon and Monstro sensors. DSMC2 cameras are equipped with a sensor positioning mechanism, or SPM for short. This allows for fast and simple adjustment of the sensor on the Z-axis with a quick turn of a wrench. On the front of the camera, you'll find your access point. You can use a T10 Torx driver to back out the protective cap in order to expose the actual adjustment point. The color of the cap is actually important. If the cap is red, it's your first indication that the camera sensor may be actually locked in place. You can verify this by removing the sidekick or cover plate, whatever's on the side of the camera, uh, with your T10 Torx driver. Underneath, you'll see that you have a screw in either the stored or locked position. If it's in the stored position, you can proceed by making your adjustment. If it's locked, you need to back out the screw and move it to the stored location. This will allow the sensor to move freely. Trying to adjust the sensor without first moving the screw can damage your camera and skew the sensor positioning mechanism. The SPM really is an engineering work of art. On the DSMC2 cameras, we use spring flexures to move the sensor along a very precise track. Don't go trying to adjust this all willy-nilly. If you find yourself using the Red Ranger, on the other hand, it features a shimmed PL mount and a completely fixed sensor position, uh, which is optically aligned inside the camera. If an adjustment's necessary on this camera, I would probably recommend uh, that this is done by the rental house unless you have their explicit approval to do so. Now that we've covered the hardware involved as well as a basic overview of what back focus actually means, let's turn our attention to the actual process of verifying and the steps taken to dial it in. So a lot of rental houses have pedestals with a chart on a track. Um, it's not a requirement, but it definitely makes changing the distance and aligning the camera perpendicular to the chart that much easier. So as far as charts are concerned, we're using uh, the DSC Laboratories Camaline Mega Trumpet Chart, uh, but really any chart with a large primary semen star or wedge star in the center will do. Even better if there's smaller wedges in the corners to assure proper alignment across the whole image. Uh, it's worth noting that a lot of lenses will lack sharpness in the edges, uh, especially when using anamorphic glass. Now you can definitely improvise with smaller charts. You can use a dollar bill, even a newspaper. Ultimately, you just need a way to judge your critical focus. I generally start on a wider lens at three feet with the aperture wide open. There are tape hooks available on the DSMC2 tactical top plate, uh, the production top plate, production top handle, as well as one stored under the side SSD module that can be positioned on the side of the camera. These hooks provide a notch positioned exactly at the camera's witness mark for your tape to grab onto. Once I've taped it out exactly three feet from the witness mark on the side of the camera, we can start finding focus on the chart. I start by punching in one-to-one -one by selecting magnify on the camera and enabling focus check. From there, we can begin fishing for focus by looking at the monitor, then checking where it lands on the lens. In case you are unaware, we are human beings. So you wanna do this several times and at different distances to make sure that your results are consistent. Take note of where it lands, whether it's short, on the mark, or deep, then throw up a couple more lenses and repeat this process. When assessing back focus, there are two things to consider, the lens and the camera's flange depth. This process of checking multiple lenses helps us verify if the camera requires adjustment or if one of the lenses out of the set is off and needs to go to a lens tech for shimming. 
If it's coming up short, we need to increase the distance between the sensor and the front flange. And if it's deep, we need to shorten the distance. Turning clockwise will pull the sensor closer to the front flange, and turning counterclockwise will push it further away. All right, so let's say the lenses are coming up consistently short on your camera. Again, don't forget to make sure that the sensor is unlocked. And this time, rather than fishing for focus, set the lens to the exact distance that the chart is taped out to. I have this lens wide open and set to three feet on our 35 millimeter lens. We can watch our monitor and ease in the focus by turning the back focus adjustment on the front of the camera with our T10 Torx driver. And since it was coming up short, we'll rotate very slowly counterclockwise until we see it hit peak sharpness on the chart. Once you feel like you're there, give it another round of finding focus on your monitor to make sure that your average focus lands on the mark. If it's still coming up a little short or maybe you've gone too far, set the lens back to three feet and make another small adjustment until you're happy with the results. Anytime you make a sensor position change, be sure to confirm it's correct by checking the alignment on several focal lengths at several distances. Replace the back focus protective cap. It's up to you if you want to lock the sensor on the side to securely fix it into place or simply leave it in the stored position. If you do secure it into place, I would recommend in some sort of indication on the outside of the body. Um, some people put tape over the back focus cap as another reminder to check the lock prior to adjusting. So that's basically it, back focus. It's just making sure that if your subject's at three feet, that your lens says three feet and making small adjustments to the sensor to make sure that that's accurate. So that's it for back focus. Uh, be sure to subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on the latest red news, projects, and informational videos. I hope this has been helpful. Uh, don't hesitate to reach out to us if you have any questions, and I will see you out there.